Okay, I think we're up to four a three towards the beginning there. Amar Mar. In the Gemara, it's about eight lines up or nine lines up. Amar Mar. Who Yashin Ben Hanashim, but he is Shaina Ben Hanashim. Where is it in the English here? Oh, the fifth line in the English. So we said before in the Brisa that in the case of, there's two cases. One case is if the father of the Hassan dies or the mother of the Kala dies uh, and everything's all ready, they do the chuppah, they have this, and they, they wait till after the chuppah to do the burial. And then the Hassan and the Kala, or, or the Hassan or the Kala, which are, they'll have their seven days of, of a feasting, we call Sheva Brachos, but they call, we call them Sheva Brachos not because it's the seven days, but because we say the seven Brachos at the end, and then the Hassan or the Kala will sit Shiva. No, whichever one had their right. And then, or the case was if the need, if the if the Kala became Anita, she had blood either from period or not from period. Nowadays, it doesn't really make a difference because she has to be uh, separated from her husband. So they have to be separated. So we're going to discuss the situation. So first of all, I just want to mention, I was look, learned, looking over Shabbos. And uh, in last week's Parsha, there was an important element about Sheva Bracha. Rachel, he woke in the morning, he saw it was Leah. So he said, you took love and you cheated me. And he said, in seven days, I'll, uh, you'll marry the other one. So the Yerushalmi says in one or two places that this is a source for uh, celebrating for seven days with the Chas and the Kaal. Now we'll see that there's a difference if it's a first marriage, a second marriage. So the Ramban in last week's Parsha So he mentions Unculus and the Ibn Ezra about the celebrations of the seven days. So Malayshvazos, the Ibn Ezra says, when this week is over, the Ibn Ezra says the seven days of feasting. And this is for seven days for Leah. So we can't uh, have the celebrations for Rachel also. So you have to wait seven days. So the Ramban says, I don't understand that. Because the seven days of, cell, of feasting was a takan of Moshe Rabbeinu to Yisrael. And this obviously is before Moshe Rabbeinu was born. So perhaps there was a uh, 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 um, um, highly regarded noble people in the non-Jewish world also had uh, periods of seven days, uh, like we find that when Yaakov died and y Yosef took his body up there to Israel along with with his brothers, and there was an Avel Shivas Yamin. There was a, a mourning for seven days. So maybe there was uh, some custom of seven days of, of celebrating a wedding, seven days of an Avelos, but, and and the Yushami mentions this. And also the, the, the Ramban says, the Breshish Rabbah says, we don't mix a Simcha and a Simcha. The, for example, we don't get married on Chalamoed because Chalamoed, well, Shabbos and Yantuf, we can't get married because we can't do Kinyanim, we can't do acquisitions, but even on Chalamoed we can't because since there's already Simcha of Yantuf, we can't combine two different Simchas. So we can't combine the Simcha of a wedding with the Simcha of a Yantif. So if the Simcha, the wedding, so you can get married a few days before Yantif, even if the Sheva, Sheva uh, the days of the seven days of Mishta continue into Yantif, but you can't get married on Yantif because then you have two uh, Simchas at the same time. But, um, so so the Ramban says the fact that the Medrash Rabbah says uh, that we use this pasuk to show that you can't combine simchas. Or two. Someone getting married, let's say in the days before the Cherem of Rebbeinu Gershom, when a person could be married to two wives, he wasn't allowed to marry two wives within the same week. Because each one would need a week of, of celebrating. And the Medrash learns it from this pasuk about Yaakov with Rilea and Yaakov with Rachel. So the, the Ramban says that's just, uh, 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 just uh, that this can't be the source because this is before Matan Torah. The halacha of the Shiva Shemayamishta didn't apply yet. Um, 
but they learned it from a pasuk vayas Shlomo esachai that Shlomo made a festival. So, so I I that Gemara I actually don't remember. At the rush on our Gemara, Rabbi Noasher. So he says that uh, there's a Torah law. Obviously, it's on the Torah because it, but the source isn't the source isn't in the Chumash, but it, it's by Shlomo because there's a pasuk in Shira Shirim Biyom Chasun Oso Biyom Simchas Libo. The day of his uh, wedding and the day of his that his heart was happy. So uh, one day, the day of the chasna itself, there's a special halacha of rejoicing, and so the rush says that that must be that's not the source of the Torah law, but that must be the source that there was a Torah law that there's one day of happiness, but uh, but there is some type of uh, early takanas uh, hazal according to the to the Ramban. I, I don't think it fits with the with the uh, with the rush that it's from Moshe Rabbeinu, but there's something for seven days, unless according to the rush, Moshe Rabbeinu is misak in one day and then later it became seven days. So okay. let's see what's the source he quotes here. We're on four a three in Ksuvos. Yeah. Yeah, you get married before Yantif, even though the Shava Brachos are going to overlap with some of the days of Yantif. Well. According to the Gemara's that we learned that you have to prepare for three days the meal, uh, that's a separate job if you get married on a Monday night. But assuming to our practice, or I mean on a Sunday night, according to our practice that that we could get married uh, on a on a Sunday or a Monday or earlier in the day on a Tuesday, it's allowed for us. To, it's mutter for us to have weddings. But again, according to the, to the din of the Gemara. Uh, based in wouldn't sit on Cholamoid, I don't think. So from that perspective, uh, you couldn't get married. And in regard to the the takana of, of preparing for three days, preparing the meal for three days, uh, Sunday night would be a problem. But it's okay to, that you get married a few days before Yantif and the Shava Brachos will overlap into Yantif. There are people I know, it doesn't happen for Tisha B'av, but for the for the for the three weeks it does. Sometimes people get married right before Shivas Batamuz. Shivas Batamuz is one of the days of the Shava Brachos. So there are people are waiting for the fast to be over and they break their fast for a Shava Brachos. Now if the Chas and the Kala themselves, I think they are they're, they are required to fast also. Uh but that could be a bit of a uh yeah, because even though it's their personal holiday, it doesn't push off the 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 Tibor's, uh fast day. The, the, the fact that the Tzibor's fast day of Shiva of uh, is it's a bit of a discussion. It's not. I mean, that's the that's what I would say. But I mean, there's more details. We'd have to understand the nuances of the of of the fast. What? Can you repeat your question? I didn't hear it at the beginning. No, no, no. Let's say Shivas or Betamos. They can't get married within the three weeks because we don't get married within the three weeks, but they might get married right before Shivas or Betamos on the 16th of Tammuz or the 15th of Tammuz. So one of the days of Shavar Brachos is a fast day. And it can happen other times also. If you get married a few days after Hanukkah, then a, 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 a Sarbateves. But, but people are in a big rush to get married before the three weeks start. So that's a much more common situation. That's why I mentioned it. Um, white cotton. Right. So the pasuk that the that the Ramban mentions about okay. So what he meant, was mentioning about Shlomo was not about Shlomo's wedding. That was about the year that Shlomo dedicated the base of Mikdash. They did it the week before Sukkot, so they had a week of, of celebrating the Hanukkah Sabayas of the Beis Amikdash, and then they had a week of Sukkot, but they couldn't, he couldn't uh, double dip. You couldn't combine uh, the Simcha of the Beis Amikdash with the Simcha of Sukkot. So that year there was actually no Yom Kippur. I mean, there was Yom Kippur, but they they feasted on Yom Kippur. But uh, but the Rosh brings a different passage from Shir Shirim to show that one day, the Rosh says it's the Raisa, the 
according to most opinions, you can't learn a, a halacha. It has to be in the Torah. So it must be, there must have been some to- Torah law. And the way we know that there is a Torah law is the Pasuk and Shir Shir. Okay, so again, our Bryce has said that if all the food was prepared and then the father of the groom or the mother of the bride died or the bride suddenly uh, saw blood, so they have to be separated. He sits with the with with the women, and she stays with the he stays with the men, and she stays with the men, women. So we mentioned that there is a three way machlokas that, according to the rivet, I believe it is that you this is literal. You have to need both. You need the men to be the man to be separated from the wife, and the wife to be separated from the husband. If the wife stays in one room by herself, and the husband is in a different room with the with a bunch of men, that's not a good enough shmirah. Even though he's with other people, she's not with other people. So that's not enough. You literally need two. Others learn that the vav here isn't a vav of an and, but it's a vav of an or. You either need him to be separated from her or her to be separated from him, but you don't need both of them to be with other groups of people. One shmirah is enough. And uh, and then, then there's a machlokas also about, is this only in the nighttime or in the daytime? So in total, there's three opinions. I didn't mention all the different permutations just now. So this uh, halacha would be a support to a teaching of Rabbi Yochanan. So I'm Rabbi Yochanan. Because Rabbi Yochanan uh, said, Afapisha amro ena velus b'moed, avodvarm shaltina nohe, shaltina moe. Even though there's no mourning in during a yantif, but private matters, there is. So what does this mean? If someone, so there, there's two possibilities. So the halacha is if someone would Lo'aleinu would die before Yantif, uh, within seven days of the Yantif, the burial was. So Shiva, um, so we'll, let's say there's there's a few cases. What, let's say someone died and was buried about 10 days before Yantif. So they had a full Shiva, and then and then a few days after Shiva, then the Yantif starts. So the halacha is, is that the Yantif cancels the, the Shlosha, and you don't need to count the 30 days from the burial but the, uh, the Yantif ends, ends Shloshim. If the burial was within a week of Yantif, so they were still sitting Shiva when Yantif starts, Shiva stops the Shiva. Yantif stops the Shiva. It does not stop, stop Shloshim, but it counts as a bonus seven days. Maybe bonus is the wrong word, but it counts as a bonus seven days uh, towards Shloshim. So meaning if they had one day of Shiva, second day of Shiva, third day of Shiva, and then Yantif counts the third. So then the, the, you would count the three days of Shiva were towards Shloshim. You count an extra seven days bonus right away. And now you're on the 10th day, even though it's the third day, how luckily it's the 10th day. Then you count the next day, which is really day four would be day 11 and 12, 13, 14, 15. So you would have about 23 days of Shloshim instead of 30 days of Shloshim. Does that make sense? If the Shiva did not end before Yantif, and uh, but but Shiva but Yantif ends the Shiva, it doesn't cut off the Shloshim, but it makes Shloshim end seven days earlier. Because as we're counting the calendar days since the person died, one, two, three. Now it's Yantif. We count the seven instead of a, a bonus seven. So now it's like day ten already. So then the next day is day eleven. So when you count up to thirty, it's really only only after about twenty three days. So that's another case of, 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 so in that case, the person is in Shloshim during Yantif. And that, uh, so the, the first case I mentioned, if Shiva ended before Yantif, then there is no Shloshim by the time Yantif is, because Yantif ends the Shloshim. This case, there is Yantif, there is Shloshim from after your, your Shiva. But then there's another case. If someone would pass away on, during a holiday, during a festival, and the burial would take place on uh, Kalamoid, or the way we pass in, if some well not there 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 most people don't have a minhag but I think the the German community and a couple other c- communities not too many have a custom of someone it's a big machlokas you shown him but if uh, there's potentially a way to be buried on the on the eighth day of Yantif in Chutzlaretz but according to Rashi that's only if Yantif would be uh, Wednesday night Thursday Friday and it would be a three day Yantif. The second day Yantif is Friday because of Kavod Lames, the because you wouldn't be able to bury them until Sunday. You could have non-Jews dig and and bury the non-Jew, excuse me, bury the Jew 
on Friday, even though it's the second day of Yantif, but it would be worse to wait another few days. Now, nowadays that we have refrigeration, it's not as important to be a rush to bury, but in Halacha where, so in, so, um, but, but if let's just say a case where a burial took place during Kalamoed, so even though the Shiva doesn't start till after Yantif is over, uh, the last day of Yantif, which is uh, in, in Chutzaretz, which is the, the eighth day, not the seventh day in Eretz but the eighth day in Chutzaretz counts as the first day of Shloshim. So how does it count as the first day of Shloshim? Avelos didn't start yet. They didn't start sitting Shiva yet. And the process is after a funeral, you start with Shiva. So the answer is, and this is this is what Rabbi, Yos, Rabbi Yochanan is telling us, because besides, well, what's sitting Shiva? Well, there's there's uh, several Nihugi Avelos. Obviously, you have to sit on a low chair. You uh, you have to have your ripped clothes. Now, you don't wear the uh, uh, public displays of mourning on, uh, on, uh, in public on Shabbos or Yantif. Uh, you cover the mirrors, but that's part of turning over the bed or sitting on a low bed. Or our, our furniture isn't made that way anymore. And no marital relations and no uh, bathing. So the elements of bathing and marital relations are private acts. So those aren't done in public anyway. Now, in, and certainly in the days of the Gemara, when the bathhouse were public, maybe that was even a public thing. Not that you bathe, but people would see who was in going into the into the bathhouse. So it wasn't necessarily a private thing. But but because at least some things are private, are done in the house or not done in the house because you're not allowed to do it. So in so because we don't engage in marital relations because you just lost a relative, it counts as the first day of Shloshim. So your Shloshim could start before the Shiva starts. That's uh, so that's what Rabbi Yochanan's saying. Even though there's no Avelis in Moed uh, during a during a Yantif, but you can it can count towards Shloshim because uh, the private. Uh, elements of mourning, practices of mourning, do apply during uh, during a, a Yantif day. Darish Rav Yosef braid the Rava Mishmei the Rava. So Rav Yosef, the son of Rava, said in the name of Rava, Lo, sh- lo Shanu Elish Loba. Okay, so this halacha that you have to separate the husband and the wife, that's only if uh, they didn't consummate the marriage yet. Avabal Ishto Yeshena Imo. But if they were able to consummate the marriage, so then they don't have to stay in separate rooms. They're allowed to sleep in the same room. So then the Gemara asks, excuse me, So the problem is, is that the Gemara, which started on the, the previous, the, the last line of the previous um, of the previous Ahmad says, if the, everything was prepared and the father of the groom or the mother of the bride died, you push, you you move, you keep the, the, the deceased uh, body in a different room and you will have the chuppah take place and they consummate the marriage so that's the first three lines in this Amud. and then they have to separate and you do the seven days of, of Shiva and the, uh, the seven days of Shiva brachas, and then the seven days of uh, so if they were if they consummated the marriage already why do they have to be separated the Gemara the, the Bryce says they separate they separate so how come Rava had to teach us, excuse me, so, so Rava, if they consummate the marriage, how come uh, Rava, uh, the Brisa says that they have to be separated? So the Gemara answers, he come or appears to each need. So if you look closely, our Bryce, the Brisa mentioned two halachas. One halacha was if everything was ready and the father of the Hassan died or the mother of the Kala died. But there was another case. That's if the, if the, if the, if the bride became Anita. So in the case where the bride becomes Anita, then they're certainly not allowed to consummate the marriage because she's Anita. And that's a very strict isser. They have that they, the marriage can't be consummated. So that's the case where the marriage wasn't consummated. So in that case, the chasan and the kala have to be separated, which are the three-way machlokas you're showing them about. But in the case of where where one of the parents died and they, they did the chuppah and they consummated the marriage, then you don't have to separate the husband and the wife. So in general, just in general, there's a halach of yichud, an isra of yichud, that uh, men and women who are not permitted to be married to each other are not allowed to be secluded together. And so close relatives are not. 
a married woman wouldn't be allowed to be secluded with anyone else. There's the complicated details, a lot of details um, about it. But the thing is, is that a husband and a wife, when the wife is Anita, even though uh, for them to be, uh, to have marital relations together would be a very strict Isser, be an Isser of Kares, uh, not, not, the basin wouldn't kill you, but he would get a heavenly death penalty. But that is a special heter. There, Yichud, the prohibition of Yichud does not apply to a husband and a wife while the wife is Anita. So, so in this case, so they were saying because the Chas and the Kala, so when is so the Isra of Yichud, uh, the the permission, the lack of applicability of the of the Isra of Yichud for a husband and wife is only once their marriage has been consummated. But if if they got married, but she became Anita, they would have to be separated before the marriage was consummated because the the heter of Yichud doesn't apply there. The heter of Yichud is since they've already been together. They'll be able to they'll be able to stay separate from each other, even in the same house, even in the same room. But for a chas and a kala who weren't able to consummate the marriage yet, there is no heter of of uh, of yichud because they're husband and wife. Because in this case, the purpose of the heter doesn't remain it since they haven't consummated the marriage yet. They have to be separated. So as a as a special safeguard. So then the gemara doesn't like this answer. The last three lines of dalad amad alaf ha'vachain katani. But in the Brisa, it's it mentioned the case of if the father, the groom, or the mother, the bride dies, you do this, and it says v'chein. Similarly, if Pirsanita. so it makes it sound like when the halaf, when the Brisa said that they have to, the bride and the groom must be kept separate from each other at nighttime or at night and day, depending on which rishon you hold. Uh, the same halach applies to Nita. It doesn't only say by Nita; it actually says it not by Nita, and it says it also applies by Nita. So how could you say it doesn't apply to? Um, to the case of when the father, the groom, or the mother of the bride dies. So the Gemara, we turn the page to the Alad Amid Beis, Hachi Kamar. This is what the Brisa means. The Chain, Misa Pirsa, Isto Nida, Valabal. And similarly, if if the bride uh, suddenly became a Nida and they were not able to consummate the marriage yet, who Yashin Ben Hanashim, Isha Shina Ben Hanashim. He has to stay with men and she has to stay with women, meaning they're not allowed to, to have Yehu, they can't be secluded. Alone in the same room. Okay, so that's how we interpret it. So now the Gemara's next point is Lamaimra So this halacha implies that a mourning is more lenient than Nida. Uh, but we're going to ask from the following statement. Nida osa labayla chutz mizika takos v'tzas hamita rachatzas panav yada varagin. So any act that a wife does for her husband, she's also allowed to do when she's a nida, except from pouring his cup and and uh, making the bed and washing his hands, uh, his face, hands and feet. So those are considered excessive. Uh, uh, they're, they're, those are considered acts of of intimacy. Uh, to the extent that uh, that if we would allow that her to do them for the husband, the the barrier that needs to be between them while she's Anita will not be that barrier will not stay intact. So she's not allowed to do those very close, intimate things to him. The Ilugabi Avelas, however, in regard to Avelas, Tanya, we learned in the even though a person is not able. To force his wife, so kochelas and pokasas, according to to, to 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 put powder on her face, or to and to uh, and to put eye makeup on. It's a little bit of a machlokas uh, tosvos uh, uh, about what the, the, these two things. Um. The MS Amru, Mosegas Loha Kos, Umatsas Loha Mito, Marchetas Loha Panov, Yara Varaglov. She's allowed to pour him his cup, and she's allowed to make the bed for him, and she's allowed to wash his uh, for him his face and his hands and his feet. So this makes it sound like Nida is more strict, because she's not allowed to do those things.
So it seems from the fact that we're not worried about these things, uh, it seems that we allow them during Avelos. So the Gemara says, Lo kasha, kam Avelos di day, kam Avelos di da. No, the difference is whether it's her Avelos or his Avelos. So... Let me. Let me. So in the Bryce that we just that we the the most recent one that we just quoted that she is allowed to uh, pour his cup and wash his his face and stuff during Shiva. That's when she's the one who has a veilus. But in the case of the Brisa, when it says she's not allowed to, that's because he's he's the one in a veilus. So the case is, is that when she's in Avelos, we will allow her to do the, to pour his cup or to wash his, his hands or his face, because if he's going to want to, uh, to be intimate with her, she's going to, she's going to push him away and say, I'm in Avelos, I don't want to. Whereas in the case of the bright, the first bride, so the one that we saw in the bottom of, of Gimel Amid Bays in the top of Dalai Lama Aleph, that's his Avelos. So if we would allow her to wash, to to wash him or to make his uh, cup, um, and he's the avel, the fact that that he's an avel isn't going to be a barrier between uh, him and her. So the Gemara rejects that answer. But that bride said the father of the groom or the mother of the bride dies. We only answered it. The, the explanation we just get, gave only works if the husband of the, if the father of the groom died, because then the groom is an Ava. But that Brisa also says if the mother of the bride. And so in that case, she's the, she's the one who's in Shiva. So what does it matter? So if she's in Shiva, the halacha should be the same thing. If she's in Shiva, that she's still allowed to pour him his wine. But that Brisa says she's not allowed to pour him his wine. So why is there a discrepancy? So the Gemara answers, Kik Tani Ashara. So you're right. That halacha doesn't apply if she's if she's the Ava. It only applies if the husband is an Ava. Okay. So that's how we uh reconcile the two Bryces about the about what the wife is allowed to do during Shiva. So now the Gemara asks another question related to the original Brisa. Based on what we just said, there's a difference if he's the Avel or she's the, the or she's the Avela. So if she's the Avela, she can pour his cup because the the fact because even though one of the practices or or, or Nihugim, yeah, the practices of Avela is that if if she's the one. Uh, sitting Shiva, it's it's forbidden to her. Now, obviously, he can't engage in the relations because his wife is is not allowed to. But it's not a prohibition on him; it's a prohibition on her. Whereas, if he's the Avel, it's a prohibition on him, not on her. So, what we're saying over here now, um, So, well, according to what we just said, if she's the one who's the mourner, uh, she still is allowed to pour his drink, etc., because she will still, if he would want to have relations with her, she'll remind him uh, and she'll push him off and say, no, we're, we're, we're not going to because of her Avelos. But if it's, uh, but if it's his Avelos, maybe she's not going to reject him, reject his approaches or whatever. So the Gemara asks, when we shine in Avelos, the day Avelos, the day, but is there really a difference if if he's the one in Avelos or she's the one in Avelos? But Tana, we learned in the Brisa, Misha makes Chamav. Oh, Chamoso, a person, a man whose mother and father-in-law or mother-in-law died. So meaning he's not sitting Shiva, but his wife is sitting Shiva. Eino yachalach of Sisto Lios Kochelos Lios Kokesas. He's not allowed her to to put on her makeup. Alakofa mitasa v'nogi Avelos. He's supposed to turn his chair over. Or his couch over and act a velos with her. 
If a woman whose father-in-law or mother-in-law died, so her husband's hitting Shiva, she's not allowed to put on makeup. She has to turn over her bed or her couch and act a velos uh, with her husband. This is talking about shiva, because yeah, because kfiya samita, the turning over the bed. In those days, the bed you're the, you're able to turn or you're able to turn it over, and it would be lower. So during shiva, they would turn it over, and it would be lower. Now it happens to be for whatever reason, the our our covering the mirrors. I'm pretty sure is based on this halacha, because to be lower, it's uh, is it this one that we're reducing the 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 element of the body so if we would have mirrors we would see ourselves so we cover the mirror uh so that's actually came of triamita nowadays i'm pretty sure yeah jeff what's your question no i never seen anyone do this no 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 so they're certainly not in shiva but there's some element of them um you know, uh, I guess supporting their spouse by we're going to see that this is only when they're in the house, but they're allowed to leave the house and do regular stuff. So this is only a sign out of special respect uh, with with the spouse. They're not a real of them. Now, I happened to be a few months ago. I was at a shiva house, and uh, and the daughter in law of the person she was sitting on the low chair in the shiva house. Why exactly? I'm not sure, but. Uh, So in that case, from this halacha, it seems that the restrictions against the husband and the restrictions of the wife would be the same. But based on what the answer that we just gave, we said that there would be a difference of halacha if the husband is sitting shiva versus if the wife is sitting shiva. If the wife is, wife is sitting shiva, she would be allowed to to pour his drink. And if and if she's sitting if she's sitting shiva, she is allowed to pour his drink. And if he's sitting shiva, she's not allowed to. But from the fact that this halacha says that they both would sit on the low chair or whatever, it sounds like the avelus is the same. So the Gemara says, "Tani bavelus diday hu yashem ben hanasha bicho shem ben hanasha." So we should say that when the brisa says that they have to stay in separate rooms, that's if it's if he's the other. If his relative died, obviously, if, in the case of the bride, it would be his father. But not if um, the mo- if the mother of the bride died. But then the Gemara says, Havachain Ketani. But again, the bride says, Havachain. It says, similarly, if either of these two cases happen, the father of the groom or the mother of the bride. So the bride itself equated the two cases. How could we try to say, say that that halacha of them having to say, stay in separate rooms only applies if he's the one whose father died. So the Gemara says, Kikitani Akichol Perichos. No, so the difference is uh, the difference between his Avelos and, excuse me, when, when the, they're, they're the same, whether he's the Avel or she's the Avel, that's in regard to her wearing makeup. But there is a difference of uh, uh, of uh, them having to stay in different rooms. If he's the Avel, then they have to stay in different rooms. If she's the Avela, they wouldn't have to stay in different rooms. But then the Gemara asks, "Vaha imo ketani." It says that sh- that if if the husband sitting shiva, the wife would sit sh- with him. It says, "Kofemitasa v'noheg ima avelos." He has to turn over his bed and and act avelos with her. So my love, ima bamita. So can't we say that in that case, ima bamita means they're allowed to stay in the same bed, even though. Uh, they're not allowed to uh, to have marital relations because that's one of the prohibitions of Avelos. So the Gemara answer is low. Ima babais. In that case, it means no, they're able to stay in the same house. Uh, so 
we're saying they only have to be a, a, an Avel together with the spouse when they're in the house together, out of respect. So this is what I think you were asking. I think it was Jeff who was asking this, that the halacha is it's only if they're in the house together and they would act that way out of respect. But again, this, this nowadays, I don't see that, that, uh, that anyone does that. So Yomar says, Lo, emo, babayis. No, they just act avelos in the house together. As as Rav, excuse me, Rav, as Rav said to his son Chia, the Apanahaga Veluso. So Chia's uh, father in law died, or mother in law died. So his wife was sitting Shiva. So Rav told his son, when you're with her or in front of her in the same room, you have to show the act, the, the, the practice of Avelos. But when you're not with her, you don't have to do the laws of mourning. So this isn't a halacha. It's a respect, or in, an, in another way of putting it, it's not a halacha of avelus that the person has to be an avel, but it's a halacha of being married. When you have to be a mar married, obviously you have you have to l'reacha kamocha to all Jews, but with your spouse, sometimes you have to do things a little differently for your spouse than you would have to do for someone else. So let's say if you have a close friend who dies, you don't have to sit on the floor with them when they're sitting shiva. But if it's your spouse, out of respect, part of being married would be to show respect uh, that way. Now I, I um. It might be possible to say that it might be out of a somewhat of a uh, of kibbut of aim for your spouse's parents, but there's a big stretch, and it's certain it and uh, for reasons that I'm not going to go into. That it's 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 a big stretch, and it's probably not the right reason. So the I, I would say that the better reason is that there's a special part of of the haftal kamocha for your spouse is a little different that includes. Slightly different things that would be a haftal reacha kamocha of a different person, and kibbutz of aim is probably not the reason of of uh, of this practice. Just excuse me for a second. Okay, Ravashi Amar um, Ravashi gives a different explanation of the difference of uh, if the if the husband and wife are allowed to 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 be yichud to be in the room together or if they're not. Ravashi says, "Me come adamas avils to achal avils to alma." Can you compare regular avilus, which is what these brises are talking about, to avilus of a newly married couple? Avilus to alma chamir. Regular Avelos is very strict, and people aren't going to uh, to mistreat it. But Avelos the Hacha, but in this case where the father of the, uh, the groom or the mother of the bride died, Kav and Akila Rabbanon, since the Rabbanon were lenient in the fact that they allowed the Shavabra, the seven days of celebration to happen before the Avelos, People might come to uh, ignore the strictness of the morning during the, sh the the postponed shiva. So it's true. Normally, there, there, there it's not. Uh, uh, we we uh, we we don't have to be this strict for for uh, yichud of a husband and a wife, but because um, but because the chachamim made a special leniency and let them do the shiva brachos. Before the Shiva, because there's already a leniency there, they might be lenient in other matters. So therefore, we do not allow the husband and wife to be secluded in the same room uh, during their during the Shiva Tamei Mishta and during their for the 14 day period. It sounds like not just during the seven days of Shiva, um, because uh, because of the because of the uh, so even though they did consummate the marriage, but there's a special stringency. A special stringency to keep them separated of yichud, um, 
because of the special heter that Chazal let them finish, uh, they, they let them do the seven days of celebration before the seven days of Shiva. So my kula, well, what's the leniency? Maybe I jumped the gun with what I just explained. My kula, what's the leniency? Elam, if you tell me about Poresh, if the heter is that we allow them to consummate the marriage first, Hasamishum Lusa. The reason that they're allowed to consummate the marriage is because it was before the burial took place. And before the burial took place, they don't the husband or the wife, whichever one it is, doesn't have a status of an aval yet and isn't prohibited from engaging in the consummation of the marriage. But Hasamishum uh, I just read that. Hasamishum Either Rabbi Lazar either Rabbi Yushua, she Magola. Because there's Machlokis, Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yushua, we learned about this in Brachos a while ago. That when does Avela start? Rabbi Lezer holds that the Avela starts when you when they take the the uh, the body out of the house toward towards burying, you know, towards the cemetery. So again, obviously in those days they didn't take it to a funeral home first. Either Rabbi Yeshua says Magola. According to Rabbi Yeshua, it's according to the Rashi explains it. It's when uh, they put the lid on the coffin in the house. It seems according to Tosos, you see, Shista uh, Magola is actually when they finish uh, uh, covering the, the the casket up with dirt in when it's in the cemetery, covering it up and making the form, the golel, because the word golel could mean something like a mound. So according to that, the the, the burial process isn't the, and the Avelis doesn't start until they put all the dirt back on top and there's some type of mound on top of it. So I mean, obviously near Israel, they have stone, they have the stones, and it's it's everything is above the ground. In most places in Waldheim, certainly in Shalom, Shalom has different issues, but in most cemeteries it's flat. There's some uh, parts of Waldheim, uh, for Roosevelt, it's very close to to uh, no on the other side, but it's by, it's near the corner there where you turn onto Roosevelt. Yeah, so displays and Roosevelt are pretty closer on the on the right hand side. So that's if you're facing south. So that's the west side of the street, I guess. The river, I guess, is on the east. Oh no, the river's on the west also. But when you go further south towards Cermak, then the river is getting closer to to uh, to Roosevelt. But soon, when you turn off of displays, the river is much further back. So one of those first areas on the right. Um, the picks are buried there, and Sam Lipschitz's uh, parents are buried. They're buried right next to each other. And Sam, there, even in wild time, they have an elevated uh, mound over the uh, over the the location of where the casket is buried. So there, it's easy to see there's a gola. So even in places where there's flat, you actually have to try to make it a little bit above the ground so you form the mound. And according to Tosos, I believe that's when the avela starts. So Yista Magola, according to Rashi, it's when the casket sealed is that the casket is 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 closed. And according to Tosos, the Golel is is from the word mound, and it's when the mound of earth is on top of the casket after the burial. So that's when the burial started. So because the neither of these actions happened yet, because the Gemara says you put them in a room, it means you keep them in the house, you don't put them in the casket yet. So the Avelis hasn't started, whether it's a Kurn Trabi Lezer Shita, whether it's a Kurn Trabi Shua Shita. So the Avelis hasn't started yet. So, of course, the Hassan and the Kala are allowed to consummate the marriage. So the Gemara says, So the, the leniency by the Hassan and the Kala was the fact that we allowed, that we allowed them to finish the seven days of celebration before the Shiva. And instead of the Shiva starting normally when it would normally start, we're delaying the Shiva for seven days. That's the leniency. And since we were lenient in regards to the Avelis and the fact that we postponed the Avelis, they might be more lenient for other things of the Avelis. Therefore, in this case, we would uh, forbid Yichud between the Chas and the Kala even during that Shiva, even though normally during Shiva, it wouldn't be prohibited. Okay, so now we're two lines up from the bottom on Dalar Medbeis. Amar Mar, we learned in a Bryce. So, so this is a Bryce again, we quoted, I think, on Gimel Amid Beis. I don't think it was on Dalai Lama, was it? Yeah, it was on Gimel Amid Bays. It's not on Dalai Lama. 
So there's a price that says Bangkok or Bangkok. Whether there is an unavoidable accident or not. Oh, yeah, this is. Uh, it was on Gimel Amid Bay's about uh, 13 lines from the top. We separate the chassan from the kala on uh, uh, on Friday night because he's going to make a chabura. Making a wound in her, causing her to bleed, is a tolda of one of the 39 malachas. So the Gemara said, so the Brisa there said on Gimel Amid Bay's on the first top half of the page, lo yiva lo of Shabbos, lo b'motze Shabbos. The first, the, the marriage should not be consummated on a Friday night or a Saturday night. So Bishlam Abir of Shabbos Mishum Chabura. We understand the prohibition against consummating the marriage on Friday night because he is going to cause her to bleed. And causing someone to bleed is uh, at least a told of one of the 39 uh, malachos because we're not allowed to kill an animal. So even in a case where you cause blood that's not uh, going to be, cause someone to die, I can't cut someone or hit them hard to get a bruise either. Because because uh, that's releasing blood. Even if the a bruise, the case the blood doesn't come out of the skin, but it's still considered. Well, maybe if it's a bruise, some people might think it's a it's a told of tzoveya of coloring instead of of shkita, but whatever. Shabbos, am I low? But what's the problem about consummating the marriage on uh, Motzei Shabbos on after Shabbos? So Rabbi Zeir, Rabbi Zeir says we're on to Hamad Aleph Mishum Cheshbonos. So Cheshbonos usually means calculations. So Rashi says, if the wedding is going to take place, or if the consummation is going to take place on Saturday night, you're going to make a, a, a meal on Saturday night, and then you're going to be saying, how much is it going to cost me on Shabbos? And you're not allowed to make business uh, thoughts like that on Shabbos. So that's only a Dirabana problem. It's not a Dirais. It's not one of the 39 Malachas are told Amrle Abaye. Abaye said to Rabzeir, but our calculations for mitzvah purposes were fitted on Shabbos. No, they're mutter. Rahab Yitchis of Rav Hamnuno, the Amri Chavayu, Rahis of Rav Hamnuno both said, Cheshbonu shall mitzvah mortal chashman b'Shabbos. You're allowed to make calculations for mitzvah on Shabbos. So we actually have in one of the Zmiros, um, I think in Kiashmur Shabbos, we say, Velachs of Cheshbonos. So you're allowed to make Cheshbonos. So I mean, obviously that's not a halachic source, but the Zemir is using this idea that if it's a cheshbon, and it also says habanos, you can also shat off uh, the girls. So you can try to make uh, a wedding. I mean, you can try to set up an engagement that the, uh, a boy and a girl should get engaged. Now, in those days, it may have been, in some cases, more of a, of a, of a thing, you know, depending on who you're marrying, it'll be good financially or it wouldn't be good financially. So... Perhaps more now than then, though maybe and maybe not nowadays. It's even more than then, though, of how much uh, of the uh, ideas of setting who this girl up with this boy or this boy with this girl, how much uh, financial uh, considerations come into effect. I, I'm not sure if it might be worse nowadays than then. So I'm Rebbe Lazar. <coughs> Another source to show that this is allowed. Rebbe Lazar says, "Post and and You're allowed to designate. Uh, money to poor people on Shabbos, meaning you realize that Shmirel needs money. You say, okay, we're going to give you $20 tomorrow. We're going to give you $50 tomorrow or tonight. Even though it's Shabbos and you can't give the money, you can decide to give the money on Shabbos. Vam Rabbi Yochanan, that's a mitzvah of Tzedakah. Vam Rabbi Yaakov, Vam Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yaakov said the name of Rabbi Yochanan, hopefully, but they can't say, so what the Midrash does, the Pekechel Iske Rabbin B'Shabbos. You're allowed to go to different shuls about the Midrashim to talk about public needs on Shabbos. So there was a case where uh, where Reb Chaim didn't let them start Kol Nidre because there was a a, a not from boy who became a communist, and so he was well, not a Shomer Torah Mitzvah, but he shot a gun at a picture of the Tsar. So that was considered an act of rebellion or act of treason with the death penalty. But in those days, if you gave a big enough uh, ransom, they would, you know. You know, uh, they wouldn't put the, the person to death. So Reb Chaim made them postpone in Brisk. Reb Chaim made them postpone Kol Nidre to collect the money, even though they should have. It was dark. He said, we have to go to the bank and get the money or, or wherever it was in their the, an office or get the money and give it to him even on Yom Kippur. So something like that, you can go on. And then there was a story that uh, uh, 
Rav Yosef, Rav Moshe's brother mentioned, it was from Rav Aaron's father. So it's from Ira Moshe's grandfather. There was a case, someone was a gabai or someone was crying. They didn't, he said, why is, and the rabbi kept telling him, no, no, no. So he said, what's going on? This man, his son was like the getaway driver. He didn't know he was a getaway driver. He was giving his friends a ride, but he didn't know that they were holding up a store. And, uh, and so he was waiting for them. He didn't know they were committing a robbery, but because they, you know, had a, they were committing robbery then, and they found him. So they arrested him and they would put him on death row too. And the, the case was, it was that the kid didn't, he, 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 he didn't know he ended up, he was a, a, the getaway driver, but he didn't know he was a getaway driver. He didn't know that they were, they asked him for the ride and to wait for them because they were committing a crime. So, so he was begging the, this guy was a simple Jew, but he was an Ehrlich person. He was asking the rabbi, I have to go to Albany to the governor to ask for clemency. And it was Shai who says, no, you can't go. And so when, when Rav Aaron's father heard, he says, yes, so, Pikuach Nefesh, of course you can go on Shabbos. So whether it's Cheshbonos to actually calculate the money or things like that, there's a, 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 a story that I find humorous. It's not a humorous story, but they, I think they said, maybe it was after Chaim died, before the briskara of Revelvel, uh, Rav Aaron's uncle became, it was the last of a brisk, became Rav. There was someone on death, death row, and once he became uh, the rabbi, they sent the message and said, you know, the law is, is that we can't execute him until the rabbi comes, so you need to go so we can execute him. He says, if if if, if you're allowed to execute me after I come, I'm never showing up. Unfortunately, there was a case that someone's uh, a child was uh, on life support, and one parent was keeping them on life support till the other parent came, and then they were going to take them off life support. So from this story, I said, it might be a better idea for the parent not to come. If the other, if they were gonna, really going to leave him on life support, but that's a different shaila about extending life. But uh, based on what what the, what Revelvo, uh said over there, there's an element that if by him come by the by the other parent coming, it would cause the uh, the life support to be removed. It might be uh, a similar case. Lo Elenu, these shailas. We can uh, do publicly things for Pikuach Nefesh on Shabbos. You're allowed to go to theaters and to article translated as circuses. It might, I think I saw in one of the Rishonim, it was um, like palaces of, of the non Jewish leaders. Um, on Shabbos, because it's it's matters of very important public matters to the Jewish community. Uh, I, I, um, and, the, and the yeshiva of of, uh, of Menashe taught, you're allowed to arrange a marriage for a girl that she she should be arranged that should be engaged uh, on Shabbos. Obviously, you can't actually do the engagement on Shabbos, but they can make all the the uh, the details they could uh, that she'll be engaged after Shabbos, but the details can be uh, done on Shabbos. Valatino kolamdo sefer lamdo umnos, and you're also allowed to make plans on Shabbos to arrange for a boy to be put into school to learn Torah, or to be put into a trade school to learn a trade, because it's also a mitzvah to learn a trade. So we see that all these things are mutter on Shabbos. So how come they are not allowed to get married after Shabbos? They can't consummate the marriage on after Shabbos. The reason that Rosera gave was because you're going to think about the calculations of the meal that it's going to cost you. But that's a meal of a mitzvah, of, of the marriage finish being finished. So that's allowed to be thought of on Shabbos. So Elorim Abzerah, so Abzerah gave a different answer. The problem is, if the if, if that's it's going to happen after Shabbos, you might be in such a rush, you're going to shecht an ant, a bird, a chicken, for the, for, uh, for the meal when it's still Shabbos. So in a big animal, it's a much bigger undertaking. You'll 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 remember that it's Shabbos. You're not going to go that far. But a, a chicken that it's much easier to sh- and quick to chef. You might chef it before Shabbos is over in celebrate being be able to cook it, clean it, and cook it for the meal. I'm really Abaye, but Abaye didn't like this answer either. Elameata, according to that, Yom Kippur shachol yos b'sheni b'Shabbos yidasa. If Yom Kippur falls out on a Monday, which in our calendar it doesn't. No. 
think it can. Um, if Yom Kippur falls out on Monday, Yidacha, they should push it off until Wednesday, which we know we don't push off Yom Kippur. Excuse me, we should push it off from Monday to Tuesday. Zerashem Yishlet Ben Ov. Because we're worried that you might shaft after Shabbos, the Shabbos uh, Shuva, you might shaft an animal so you could eat on Erev Yom Kippur. So Erev Yom Kippur is a big mitzvah, special mitzvah to eat. We learned about it also in, in Brachos, that uh, if you eat on the 9th of, uh, of, uh, of Tishrei, it's as if you fasted the 9th and the 10th. So, and we mentioned Rebbeinu Yonah for several reasons why it's important to eat. One reason is just the practical. If you don't eat, you're not you're gonna you're not gonna be able to fast. But another reason is because on Yom on Yom Kippur we're celebrating. Well, this is not what he said. He says that normally you have a yontif meal, but on Yom Kippur it's yontif, but we're not allowed to eat on Yom Kippur, so you have to have the meal air of yontif. And Ravaron expanded on that and said that we're celebrating the second luchos on Yom Kippur because Moshe came down with the second luchos on Yom Kippur, so that's the celebration. So according to this, people wanted to say that according to Rashi, it's a mitzvah to eat even the night before Erev Yom Kippur, if we're worried we're, we'll shaft the bird. But really, uh, that's only a possibility, but Rashi really doesn't hold that way. The mitzvah is only to eat on Erev Yom Kippur, but according to this question of Abaye, we're worried that you'll shaft it the night before Erev Yom Kippur so that you'll have the food to eat on, on Erev Yom Kippur. So the Gemara says, Hasan do lotare. When it's only for yourself for Yom Kippur, you're not going to be so focused or manic. I mean, manic is too strong of a word, but you're not going to be so worried about the food situation that you're going to be in such a rush to shaft the the bird so that you'll have food to eat of Yom Kippur. But tari. But when you have other people coming because it's a wedding, you're more nervous about the food and you might be overzealous and in a big rush to shaft before Shabbos is over. Inami, or another reason, Hasa Isle Ravcha, Hasa Isle Ravcha. When Yom Kippur is Sunday night, you have plenty of time on Sunday to make a meal. But when the wedding is on Saturday night, there's not plenty of time to make the meal on Saturday night. But Hashad Asa Sahachi, once we said this answer, Erev Shabbos Nami, Gzera Shemo Yishchot Ben Ov. We could also say the reason that they're not allowed to consummate the marriage on Friday, uh, Friday night is because you might, because you'll be feasting in honor of the wedding, and you might shach during the wedding to get more food, and it might be Shabbos already. So we're saying that the reason isn't, uh, now we're seeing that the reason isn't that he's going to make a chabura, but the Gemara Ness is going to have a big uh, discussion about that. So we are, leave it here. And uh, it's already by Lahu. Yibayelahu on Hamad Olive. My article says it's 5A2, but there's a mistake on here. There's the gray's in the wrong spot. Or maybe it's it is 5A2 or towards the bottom of the first column, but the gray on the and the Gemara doesn't match what's on the English side here. Maybe they fixed it in 